Hey, welcome to Mission Online, uh, our experience that we're going to have on this Palm Sunday. Uh, we hope that as the chaos of life has been uh, swirling all around, that you are going to have a moment today where you get to experience peace and joy in a supernatural way. In just a few minutes, we're going to jump into worship and uh, we're going to lift the name of our Jesus. And then I'm going to preach a message that I hope will encourage you and inspire you to trust Jesus during this stormy season that we're in. And the reality is we're all in this together. So no matter what you have going on right now, let's let's set aside the cell phones and let's set aside our coffee. Let's worship together and experience what the love of Jesus really is. I'll raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemy I'll raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I'll raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. I'll raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I'll raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness play. I'll raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I'll raise a hallelujah. Here you lost your hold of me. In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is
There is a name Who reigns without contention Whose power can't be questioned or contained With humble fame He rules the earth and heavens His glory knows no measure or refrain And it's bursting past the borderlines of space Jesus Enthroned upon the praises of our hearts Jesus You're the King and you're the center of it all There is a name Reaching past the margins And calling sons and daughters back to Him And as He sings We can hear the roar of heaven As prodigals are coming home again For the triumph of His name will never end Jesus enthroned upon the praises of our hearts Jesus you're the king and you're the center of it all Jesus, enthroned upon the praises of our hearts. Jesus, you're the King and you're the center of it all. Every heart will know There is 
there's no name above the name of Jesus. Death could not hold him down, and no grave could keep him bound. All sin and sickness bow to the name of Jesus. For every eye will see, and every heart will know, there is no name above the name of Jesus. Death could not hold him down, no grave could keep him down. All sin and sickness bow to the name of Jesus. Face 
toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hey, what a great worship experience that we just had right then. And I, I hope you experienced what I felt as we were worshiping. And, you know, church doesn't look like we think it should right now. Can we be honest for a moment? Uh, I don't even know how to act right now. This is not how I thought my first three and four months of me and Crystal being pastors of the Mission Church would be. But yet here we are. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that I, I'm thankful for is that a few months ago, God spoke to us uh, through one of our staff members to change our serve team to, you know, home team. Welcome home. And legitimately, that's exactly how we're having church at home. Uh, so I know that you probably are not experiencing church the way you would like it and, and just like myself, but we can still be together. And one of the great ways we do that is by giving. Uh, and, and I want to encourage you, we've had uh, God be very gracious to us, and we've been able to be very gracious and generous to others around us, including our community and our local food bank, because of people like you that have partnered with us. You can do that still on the app and online. Uh, you can mail it in, but uh, don't stop being generous, because what you're doing is you're, you're saying you're trusting God through the storm. So you can do that. Uh, but right now, if you would, just high-five somebody in your house. Uh, hopefully you're not alone. If not, uh, maybe high-five your dog. Uh, give him a good belly rub. Uh, and let's jump into the Word of God because I believe that the Word will change us if we will allow it to penetrate our hearts. And then we're going to uh, jump into Mark chapter 5 on this Palm Sunday. I thought about preaching a message about Palm Sunday, but uh, the Lord spoke this to me earlier in the week and it just felt like I could not escape it. So I want to share this Word with you today. And we're going to read in Mark uh, chapter, uh, we're going to start in Mark chapter 4, verse 35. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. And now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow and they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He arose and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? There's something about this story that really gravitates to the season that we are in right now because it is the epitome of the unknown. It's the epitome of the uncertain. It's the idea that we have no clue what's about to happen. Uh, here these disciples are, and they've just experienced a great revival, if you would. Uh, and then Jesus says, hey, look, go get in the boat and let's go to the other side. And I don't know about you, but I would be saying, hey, what's wrong with the side that we're on? Great things are happening, but yet Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Can I just encourage you? Don't be mistaken. Sometimes the journey from one place to another that God sends you on will come with tumultuous moments. It will come with rocky seas. It will come with uncertainty. And and actually, it'll come sometimes even when moments of hopelessness will arise. Because the truth is, God is more consumed about the destiny than He is about just the journey and, and, and getting distracted in the moment. Here these disciples are, and God calls them from one place to the next, and they encounter a storm. I don't know about you, but I don't like storms. Uh, but you know what I don't like even more? I don't like fear. And today, uh, that's where we're going to focus our energy and our effort in this message. And, and I want to share with you two points from this story that I think may help you today as you are on a journey uh, to a destination. Number one, Jesus still loves despite your fear. Jesus still loves despite your fear. I know that seems kind of condescending. Of course Jesus still loves. But what you need to hear me say right now is that Jesus still loves you. The second thing is Jesus still loves during the storm. Guess what? He hasn't changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God when the stock market was uh, blowing out the water as He is today. He's the same God when six months ago we were thriving and everything was beautiful as He is today. God still loves during the storm. First thing we see is that Jesus loves despite our fear. At one point He says, Why do you fear? Where's your faith at? 
And I don't want you to think that this is a message of condemnation to say, hey, why are you being fearful? But I believe that as impactful as the pandemic is, and I don't want to make light of it. I don't want to act like it's not a big deal. It really is. And, and as much as I do not like being told to shut down church, we're still having church just in a non-traditional way. But the truth is we want to do what's right and healthy for those around us. But I hate even more. I hate the idea of fear. I think fear is the enemy's way of, uh, of prohibiting God's people from moving forward. I don't like fear. But what I do love is that even in fearful moments, God still loves us. A few years ago, I had a chance to go to Haiti. Uh, we have a missions organization down there and three churches and a school with 150 students that you're still feeding, by the way, and being a part of that. And uh, We would take a missions trip uh, every year. And there was a every time we took a missions trip, we'd always take one day to go down and have that fun excursion for our team. And we had this beach area right on the outside of Jeremy, Haiti, where we would go in and, and it was illustriously beautiful. It was crystal clear and, and it was just a great time and we'd always go and have a good time. Well, the first time I went, I remember they told me about a cave that you could swim out to and you could swim into the cave and then you could swim into a hole in the bottom of the cave and swim through, come out on the other side and climb up a little cliff and cliff jump into the ocean. I love cliff jumping. I love a little bit of adventure. And so I remember swimming out there and I got out there and I was holding onto the side inside of the cave and I looked down at the hole down in the bottom where I could see light shining through. But all I could think about was, what if I get halfway there and I get stuck? What if I don't make it? What if it doesn't work? What happens if I die right there in this hole in the middle of Haiti? And I I tried to bring myself to do it. I'm a good swimmer but I just couldn't do it. The next year we go back, we go to the same place, and this year I determined I'm going to do it. I swim out to the cave, swim uh, swim in there, and I look down, and once again, fear gripped my heart. I ain't going to lie. I wish I could say I did it, but I didn't. So then I thought, you know what? I'm going to swim around the cave to the other point because I'd heard you can climb up and climb up there and cliff jump. My friend Joel DeSherry, who's in Africa right now, had said he had done it. And, and I thought, I've got to do it. I've got to do it. So I'm going to swim around the outside. The problem is I swam around the outside and I went to try to climb up the rocks and they were really sharp and the waves were banging into me. And I remember thinking, this is the dumbest idea yet, but it didn't hit me until I noticed on my arms and my legs as the waves had crashed me into the wall, of which I did not get to climb, that I'd started bleeding. Can you imagine the thoughts that began to run through my mind as I'm swimming back to the beach? I am bleeding in the middle of the ocean. I kept, I, listen, I ain't gonna lie. I prayed, I prayed like a maniac through, uh, as I was swimming that hundred yards back to the ocean and back to the beach, uh, back to the beach. And, and I kept on thinking, oh dear God, don't let a shark eat me. Isn't it funny how fear can drive us to places? I never did get a chance to jump off that cliff, cliff, but I'm thankful that God still loves me despite my fear. I'm thankful that even when moments of fear come and grip our hearts, He still loves us. And no matter how you're feeling right now, He loves you so very much. The second thing we see is that the disciples, when they go to wake Him up. Now, first off, Jesus is sleeping on a pillow. I want to know what kind of pillow He had that He can sleep through the storm. Come on, somebody. I want to know what kind of pillow. That was one uh, beautiful tempur pillow that it would allow Him to sleep through a rainstorm. Finally, the disciples are like, we don't know what to do, so let's go wake Him up. So they go and wake Him up. And the first thing he says is, he goes, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? They had asked him, hey, do you not care about us? Do you not care that we're going to die? Can I just remind you, no matter what you're experiencing, he still cares about you. You may be going through the storm. You may be experiencing uh, joblessness right now. You may be experiencing financial difficulty. God still cares despite your storms. Do not be mistaken. God has not turned his back on you. God is not angry at you. There are things that we need to deal with in our life. And I think there's an opportunity for us to repent of some things in our world. But the reality is that God sent his son so that we could have life and experience his love like never before. God still loves us during our storm. I uh, 
Many years ago, Crystal and I went through a very difficult and tumultuous marriage. And we were, to be honest, we really didn't like each other. And, and we were both kind of uncertain whether we wanted the marriage to continue. Uh, we'd moved to Georgia to take a job. Our finances were in disarray. And I'd left the ministry just trying to survive. And I remember something happened in Crystal. And, and Crystal just began to love me in a ways I didn't deserve. She made it a decision in her heart that she was going to love me like 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says. Love suffers long and is kind, does not envy and does not pray to itself, is not puffed up, does not seek its own, does not behave rudely, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And she really personified what that love, enduring, and bearing all things is. And I was not easy to get along with. I really was angry. I was dealing with some personal bitterness that had just gripped my soul. And I remember one day sitting out on the front porch in our house in Woodstock, Georgia, when God spoke to me. And he said, if she can love you this much, how much more do I love you? And I, we were in the middle of chaos. We were in the middle of a storm. I didn't know how to survive. And yet God reminded me that he loved me even in the storm. You need to know that. During this storm that God, uh, that, that you're going through, God loves you. God is with you. He has not forsaken you. He has not forgotten you. If He knows about a bird that falls in the field uh, and perishes, He knows about you. If He can count the hairs on your head, on some of your heads, He knows about you. You have to believe that no matter what you have and what is going on and how fear grips, you've got to fight fear with everything in your life because God still loves you. And the only way fear will win is if you honor fear. I would rather you honor God than ever honor fear because He's faithful in the storm. He's faithful through the struggle. He is faithful to you. The reality is, I think this story cannot be told without going over to chapter 5. And I want to read these verses to you in closing before we take our communion together. Chapter 5 says, When they'd come to the other side. Can that just sink in for a moment? When they had come to to the other side. This storm will pass. This too will pass. But what you need to know is that you are going to come over to the other side. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't succumb to fear and anxiety and panic and pain. Keep moving forward. Yea, though I I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Though I walk through... You're not going to stop in the, in the valley of evil. You're not going to camp in the valley of evil. You're going to walk on through. When they, uh, uh, when they'd come to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes, and when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been around with sh- had been bound with shackles and chains that had been uh, that he had pulled apart. Verse five, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself. But when he saw Jesus that day, he ran and he worshipped him. The reality is that Jesus understood that on the other side of the sea, on the other side of the storm, on the other side of the pain, on the other side of the fear, on the other side of anxiety, on the other side of the struggle, there was something greater than what we were experiencing. There was something greater than the, what was they were going through right then. And the reality is, on the other side of this storm, we're going to see people get saved. On the other side of this storm, there's going to be a testimony of God's goodness and God's grace. On the other side of this storm, we're going to declare that God is faithful and that God is good and that God is wonderful. And on the other side of this storm, we'll, they will raise a testament to the beauty and the glory of a risen king. We will not stop in the storm because there's someone on the other side that needs to hear your testimony. There's someone on the other side that needs to hear your, 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 how God has brought you out of, out of the mix, how to set you up and set you apart, how he's pulled you up out of the miry clay and set your feet on solid ground. Because when you get through this storm, there will be people that will get saved because of what God has done in you and through you despite what you've experienced. We have to remember that the destiny that is lingering on the other side of our storm is more important than the struggle that we are experiencing right now. You have 
to keep going. There are people that need to hear your story. There are people that need to hear how you held on to faith despite the struggle. There are people need to hear how you how you though you struggled financially, God prevailed because you did not quit on God. People need to hear. Listen, the world has tried to tell us that there is no hope, but I believe there is hope in Jesus. The world has tried to tell us that we we can't do this, but I believe there is hope in Jesus. I refuse to give up on God because God has never given up on me. Right here and right now, we got to push forward. We can't quit. And maybe you're out there right now and you're experiencing what I like to call hopelessness beyond measure. Maybe you're here and watching this right now because somebody told you about this. Somebody tagged you in a Facebook post or on a YouTube channel and you're sitting here watching, feeling like there is no hope. Like there's nothing to live for. There's nothing to move forward for. And you don't know if you'll even survive the next few weeks. God is faithful. If you'll just look unto Jesus, just like this, this man who had been found in the tombs, looked unto Jesus, said that he ran and he worshiped him. Could we do that? Could we turn to Jesus right now? Could we run and worship him? The Bible says that if you'll believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. So I want to share some words with you right here and right now, uh, all across all the digital formats, so that you may experience Jesus. Jesus, I need you. I need you in my life. Forgive me. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Let me follow you all the days of my life. Give me hope in hopeless situations. Give me grace when I fail. And strength to continue to move on in Jesus name. If that was you and you said that prayer right there because you're turning back to Jesus or you're turning to him for the very first time, text this number, Jesus, text Jesus to 985-277-1117. We want to partner with you. We want to help you. We want to serve you. I don't care if you live in, in, uh, Botswana. We'll still try to figure out how to partner with you to help you find a good church if we're not it. But we want to be a part of the solution with you. Hey, listen, I I want to pray one more time for everybody out there. And I want to specifically pray before we take communion together. uh, And if you want to go grab your communion supplies real quick, uh, I encourage you to do that because we're going to take communion again this week. But Friday night, we're going to have our Good Friday service. We're going to do it. And uh, we had planned six services for Easter weekend. So Friday night, we're going to have our Good Friday service right here the same way. And, and I want to encourage you to, to tune in. I'm asking you, invite a friend. Have a watch party. You don't even have to be in the same building, in the same house, but have a watch, watch party together. I believe that I'm going to share what happened to Jesus on the crucifixion that I think might help you experience love like never before. The church has always seen uh, a, a coming home at Easter. Let's not let this be any different. Start inviting right now. We'll have our Good Friday service and then we'll have our Sunday morning service as well on all the online platforms. Father, I just thank you for the grace and mercy upon your people. I thank you for those who have experienced hopelessness, devastation, financially, physically, emotionally, spiritually. I'm asking you, God, to reach down and touch them supernaturally. Lord, even in their homes, in their cars, in their in their offices, wherever they may be watching this, may they experience your grace and your mercy. Be with them and keep them in Jesus' name. The Bible talks about Jesus having communion and there's something significant about communion because what it does, it reminds us that Jesus is alive today. He, but his body was broken, but it was broken for us. So I want to encourage you right now to take the bread as it is a remembrance of his broken body. Father, I thank you that you sent your son who died on that cross, whose body was broken so we may experience wholeness and we may experience life beyond our own understanding. Thank you, Father, for sending your son, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Take. And then he said, take the communion, take the wine, because it represents my blood. I don't know about you, but the blood of Jesus saved me, delivered me, healed me, and I wouldn't be here today without it. And I want to keep 
reminding myself of what he did. Thank you, Father, for sending your son to shed his blood. He was the ultimate sacrifice for humanity's sin. We will remember him, we will know him, and we will continue to call him Lord. In Jesus' name, take and drink. Hey, we love you guys. We're praying for you. If there's anything we can do, please let us know. And let's continue to press forward, not honoring fear, but honoring faith. In Jesus' name.